Do you absolutely hate mornings? Or maybe you don't hate mornings. You just, they really bother you. It's just rushing around and there's like no time and you, and you just, maybe you don't have the gumption to get out of bed. You don't like getting out of bed and there's all these ways in which your morning's crunched. Well, I'm here to give you a new practice, a new exercise, which is going to help alleviate a lot of the suffering that comes from our mornings. This is Zen in a Moment. It's a podcast where you can learn to train your brain to stop stressing forever and be the cool, awesome person that you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out to in the flow, which means feeling light, open, and wise. And I'm your host, Zen Cryer de Brook, stress as guidance expert. Oh man, mornings, right? Gosh, I can't tell you. And I've, I've got pretty good mornings because I use this extraordinary, amazing tool that I call the internal guidance system. And I'm going to share with you how to do that. Now, if you don't know what your internal guidance system is or your IGS for short, then please go to zenandamoment.com. And there on the homepage is a video where I explain that you were born with a factory installed guidance system. And I will give you a taste of what it feels like. So here's the thing. We have these things inside our head, and I've talked about this on another podcast, but we have this thing inside our heads, which I call the critic and the child. And they show up first thing in the morning for most of us. And what they look like is, I don't want to get out of bed. I want to stay in bed and it's warm and it's comfortable and I didn't get enough sleep or I was up at three o'clock in the morning. I didn't sleep well that night. Am I ever going to catch up on sleep? That would be your child whining and moaning and groaning. And then you have your critic. And your critic's like, get out of bed. There's so much to do. You've got to get the kids up. You've got to get the your lunches made and get out the door. You've got all kinds of things. You didn't work out again. You slept in. You overdid it. Gosh, are you ever going to take care of yourself? That would be your critic, right? And what happens is, is we lay in bed and we go back and forth. Part of us beating ourselves up for not getting out of bed and part of us actually whining and moaning that we want to stay in bed. But the truth is that both of those thoughts create suffering. Now, here's the interesting thing. Your internal guidance system is there to be helping you to live right in between these two voices so that you get to become the cool referee. So as you're laying there in bed, the first way to start your day is to see what opens you. Opening is where you feel a light, expanded feeling in the center of your body with your IGS saying that thought is true for you. And closing is when you feel a constricted, tight sensation in your body, meaning that that thought is not true for you. So as you're thinking, if your child starts complaining that it doesn't want to get out of bed, but you feel a light feeling, that means you don't have to get out of bed in that minute. Now, I doubt you're going to be open at staying in bed for two to three hours, (laughs) depending on most of us. But for a few minutes, you can lay and rest in the ease and openness that you're intended to stay in bed. If you get an opening at when your critic is saying, it's time to get out of bed, there's lots to do, and you feel a light feeling, get up and out of bed. But here's the reason why this, cre- this practice that I'm talking about creates ha- a happiness in the morning. The reason it creates happiness is because this opening fills your body with energy and it feels good. The suffering evaporates. Then what you do is, is you actually, your mind will be throwing things into the mix. So for me, I have a three-year-old. Generally, he wakes me up in the morning, climbs in bed, and snuggles with me. Now, the time I spend snuggling with him is completely dictated by my internal guidance system. Sometimes we'll spend a good 10 minutes kissing and giggling and rolling around. Other times, it's maybe a minute and a half, and I'm getting an opening that I need to get out of bed. It is actually really funny how when I do get the opening to get out of bed faster than those 10 minutes of good snuggle time, he'll throw a temper tantrum or there's something that I wasn't aware of that needed to be done. There's always some reason why I have to get out of bed. It's the same thing once I'm out of bed. I use my internal guidance system to check in on what to feed my son for breakfast. As I'm looking through the items and the elements in my kitchen, I open if it's going to be a pouch morning or a waffle morning. And it's all based on time. I move through my day. Generally, I like to empty the dishwasher while my son's eating. Some days, it's not. It's not the best thing. Some days it's to turn on the TV and we'll watch a little of one of his kids' shows. Maybe do a little cuddling on the couch. It's a pouch morning, so I don't have to do any prep. And I'll open that it's okay to sit on the couch. Other mornings, I'll open that it's really important to do the dishes. Put the dishes away in the dishwasher and get the dishwasher loaded before I start my day. As I go through my entire day, I follow this practice of following my openings. Now, here's another secret that I want to share with you. 
if things start to get hard, if things start to get tough, what I call clunky, it's clunkiness is like when you spill coffee on your favorite shirt and then you stub your toe or you drop your briefcase or your bag and all your stuff falls out or, or, you know, these little things that happen and they seem to go ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk They ruin our day. It makes our mornings really, really stressful and unhappy. My recommendation for you is if you're having mornings like that where it's just stressful and unhappy, sit down and do the listening practice. And what that looks like is feeling your feet and your hands and listening to the room around you. Yes, you can do this, even with your family running around. I promise your IGS won't leave you sitting there for 30 or 40 minutes. Just stay with your listening practice. If you need to, you can have your eyes open. But be present with the body and quiet the mind. And here's what will happen. This is how you begin dropping back into the flow, feeling light, open, and wise. This is how you begin being pulled from your divine center into your day. And you can do this at any time, any time of your life, when things are feeling clunky, when they're feeling out of whack. You center your body, you center your energy and quiet your mind by staying really focused on the bottom of your feet, your hands, and the experience of listening to the world around you. And then you wait and the, there'll be something that will be a little bubble up. It'll, it'll occur to you to do it, okay? It'll occur to you to rise up and go make the coffee. It'll, it'll, you'll feel it. it. It starts at the lower area of your solar plexus and it kind of feels like a drawing, a pulling out. Have you ever cleaned your house on a, on a Saturday? Maybe it's a beautiful spring morning and you cannot believe how much you got done two or three hours later. It's like you pick up this, you move that, you kick the door shut, you dust this, you move, and it's just like this flow. Or cooking a really complicated meal, right, where there's a lot of moving parts, and you're, you're kind of moving, flowing throughout the kitchen, and you stir the pot, and then you turn around, and you rinse this, and you put it in the dishwasher, and you chop this up, and you throw a little more spice in, and there's a flow, there's an energy. You're not coming from your mind. Your, your body's doing it for you, right? You can live in that nourishing, high-performance uh, place in your life by staying in the flow, by following the impulses that come through your internal guidance system to lead you, to guide you in the world. It is a practice. It does take some time. It does take some time and energy to remember to do it and also to kind of tune in, but it's not difficult. It's always there. It's ready to be activated with just a few moments of being present with the body and waiting to see what comes up next. Now, while you're sitting there being present with the body, you may have some thoughts pop in that close you, where you, you say, I shouldn't be sitting here, or I need to call this person, and you'll feel a tightening, or I need to get up and do this particular thing, and you'll feel a tightening. That's not what I'm talking about. Don't follow those impulses. Don't follow those impulses. Those impulses are coming from your mind, and your mind does not know how to be in the flow. Your mind does not know how to be in the flow. Your internal guidance system the center of your divine experience knows. And it all it takes is a slowing down, being present, and waiting for it to bubble up. So try that this week. Try it before you even get out of bed. Start with naming your critic and your child and finding which one gives you the more light, airy, open feeling. And then start focusing on coming from the center of your being and watch the happiness, the joy, the ease, the grace show up. This is Zen Crierder Brook from zeninamoment.com. So please, please forward this on to people that you know will enjoy this message and will enjoy this information. I am looking to start a revolution, eradicating stress on this planet and having us all come from this divine center of presence where happiness and joy and purpose reside. I thank you so much for listening to this podcast today and I'm sending you love and blessings.